Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show, the podcast. Episode, we're above 90. I don't know, 91, I think. That's my guess. We are approaching 100 episodes. Unreal that we are still uh, live on air, air quotes. Um, Not sure what the plan is for episode 100 yet. I do want to do something, at least that I deem special. We're going to figure that out. We're going to get there, but I just want to take this opportunity because I just realized, oh shit, I need to plan a special 100th episode, um, that I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys thoroughly. If you're on YouTube, like, subscribe at any point during my idiot rant. Comment down below if you agree, disagree. We're going to start having more open conversations about this game. Um, right now, I would like you to comment down below, who do you think the big Legends and Flashbacks collection player is going to be? It's coming out on June 3rd. That's this upcoming Friday. So let me know who you think it's going to be. That's a good jumping off point into what we're going to talk about today. So last week, we talked a lot about what you need for, or what I think you're going to need for the collections. We've learned some more information. So in some ways, this is going to be last week's episode 2.0. We're not going to go through every single collection again. That's not what I mean. But this looks like it's going to be potentially one of the biggest... Uh, content weeks of the year. Things change. We don't know what's coming out in the future. Postseason content is often quite good. Finest is always a good content drop. But I think this is at very least the best content drop we're getting so far. So let's talk about it. Here we are again looking at the good old calendar. Roster update, thing of the past. How many stubs did I make from it, you ask? <laughs> Zero. That's fine. I'm not good at investing. Last year, I got decent at it. And then right as I got decent at investing, they changed the market values. So I'm, I'm just fucking, I'm not, I'm, I'm not even going to bother. I'm just going to find ways to make stubs another way. Um, summer circuit qualifiers. Those were this weekend. Congrats to all who played well or who had the balls to sign up and try. I do not have said balls, so I did not... <laughs> Give it a shot. I don't like playing Legend. I've played one Legend game this year. I won it, and I'm hoping to not play another one for a significant amount of time. But the content coming this week. New content coming the night I'm recording this, Monday. Happy, or I guess you don't really say Happy Memorial Day, but a thank you to veterans who have served. Uh, thank you to those who have lost their lives, who have family members who lost their lives. Uh, we should take uh, Memorial Day as an opportunity, yes, to enjoy the time with our loved ones, and, and if you choose the barbecue, go for it. I'm going to go barbecue some burgers and dogs uh, after I'm done recording. But, uh, you know, Memorial Day is, is a day to remember, so just keep that in mind. But Memorial Day, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Time. New rank season begins. New World Series awards, Takashi Legend Pitcher, Greg Maddox, uh, and awards Legend Hitter, I believe it's MVP Reggie Jackson from his days with the Oakland Athletics. Um... As of recording, I have not seen attributes yet. I don't think we will probably until the cards come out. I think the pick, in my humble opinion, is Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox cards suck almost always. Reggie Jackson has a better swing almost always. Like, almost always being a more useful card is what I'm intimating. Uh, but with the new Takashi collection that is coming, as you see on the calendar, the next day... May 31st, Tuesday, uh, you're going to want to have Greg Maddox because you need to collect every Takashi card. Yes, every single one, not just the original five. They announced that you need to have the original five plus Joe Morgan, plus Delgado, plus, uh, and now Greg Maddox. I might even be, let, let's actually look to make sure I'm not forgetting anybody. Um, Takashi, Takashi, Takashi. Oh, and Trevor Hoffman. Yeah, so you have to have all eight of those plus Greg Maddox, nine of them. And we think, based on the clue given, it's going to be a Takashi Babe Ruth. And my guess is because we have a 97 Carlos Delgado here, and the last collection that dropped with the game was 96 Joe Maurer, I think we're getting a 99 Babe. I think this is our God-tier Babe for this year. Just a guess. Uh, could they give us a 97? Yeah, that'd be a little strange, I think. I think it's going to be a 99. Um, the contest's been a little silly this year. So as you can see, I have all the Takashis. Uh, prior to the announcement Monday morning that you needed all of them, I only needed Joe Morgan and Vlad Guerrero. Those are the only two I did not have. So as soon as they made the announcement, I immediately bought Vladimir Guerrero because his price 
jumped up considerably after I bought him. It's leveled itself back out now. So if you're still trying to get him, now is a decent price to get him. It'll probably go up again uh, when the collection drops because people are going to see the Babe Ruth card and be like, oh, fuck, I want that now. So I would suggest while it's in this low to mid 30,000 range, get the cards you still need. I don't mean to just single out Vladimir Guerrero there, by the way. Chase Utley, similar price. Ricky Henderson, similar price. Mickey Mantle, similar price. Randy Johnson, similar price. Trevor Hoffman, a little cheaper because he's going to be a free event rewind and we should be getting a new event soon too. Joe Morgan was an expensive boy, but I'll tell you how we got him. Carlos Delgado, I've had for about two weeks or a week or whatever, and his price has almost doubled since I bought him. So it's a shame that I can't sell him because I need him. I was able to uh, get Joe Morgan today. So I went, uh, not flawless, I finished the BR program, or I finished the 100 points needed for the BR program, uh, like a week after the whole thing came out. I chose J.R. Richard because he was the most expensive one at the time sold J.R. Richard and turned him into multiple other second half cards because I was trying to fill out my collections. Uh, J.R. Richard was not a card I was going to use. So that was my strategy there. I regret now not taking Joe Morgan. So I texted my group chat this morning with, uh, you know, friends of the show and, and friends of mine, Shane Payne, Chris Batflips, Filthy Rich, Slice, you know, the whole crew. You guys, if you're in my Twitch streams, twitch.tv slash kdjtv, you know them. Oh, speaking of... My busy season at work is over. Finally, it's done. It's over. It's finite. Kaput. Capiche? So, no stream schedule per se. It's going to change week to week, but we will have more streams, more, hopefully YouTube content. Not promising that. Hopefully that, but definitely more streams. So I'm coming back. The grand return. I'm here. I promise. So, I digress. Text in the group chat this morning. I was like, well, I don't have Joe Morgan and I don't have any stubs. I was at, I'm about... 75,000 now, 73,000. I literally had 800 stubs this morning. And I had a BR team that I had not played with yet, so it was 0 and 0. I texted the group chat, I was like, "Well, I need it to either go 12 and 0 or 12 and 1. If I go 12 and 0, I'll take Joe Morgan. If I go 12 and 1, I'll sell the 12 win reward and I'll buy Joe Morgan." So some fucking how I went 12 and 1. I called my shot and I got Ronald Acuña Jr. Sold it. Turned it into Joe Morgan and a couple other cards to fill out collections. So, uh, I went to uniforms on accident with the state. There we go. So, if, if you need Joe Morgan, save the stubs. Poke around. Is it a great card, Joe Morgan? No. Would I be shocked if I saw people using it right now? No. This, this conversation is not about the Joe Morgan card itself. But at 80,000 stubs... It's a little expensive, but it's honestly, it's not a backbreaker. If you bought this card because you want the Babe Ruth, or if you're trying to save because you think you want Babe Ruth, just do it. It's worth it, I promise. I, I mean, hopefully, I'm going to have Babe Ruth pretty quickly. I don't think I'm going to be able to make a World Series run that fast. I'm not playing much tonight. So I'm not going to have Greg Maddox right away, but I'm ho hoping by the time... Tomorrow rolls around, or Tuesday day you're listening to it, uh, maybe Wednesday, Thursday. Maddox is cheap enough that I can just snatch him. We go ahead. Um, Babe Ruth is going to be nasty. Every year Babe Ruth's swing is disgusting. His his ad If this is his like true 99, his attributes are going to be fucking cracked. I don't think it's going to be as good as the 125s across the board that we got last year, because that card was dropped a little later. But Babe Ruth is generally a must. Like, he's generally a must-have in your lineup. So... Collect your Takashis. You have a few days left to get a free Takashi in the Roy Halladay and Friends program path. As you can see, I have almost finished the program. It's really not difficult. I'm also not really stressing it much anymore because it's just these packs at the end, like these standards that don't really mean much. Um, but at 340000 you get a free Takashi card. This should have been our first indicator or your first, someone's first indicator that a collection was coming. You can get any of the five original base rounds, we can call them. Uh, the ones that were from the pre-order pack. You can get any any of the five. Choose one. Uh, if you have them all already, take one. Hold it until the collection drops, and then sell it. Um, but push for that. Push, 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 push. I promise you can do it. They have given you so much to already do. Let's Let's just say you don't play the game a ton, and only do the stuff required to progress in this program. Ready? We're going to do some counting here together. Let's say we skip all the daily moments. I don't really do daily moments much anymore. 
Featured program moments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's 20,000 free XP right there. You could do this in an hour, maybe even faster. So 20,000 right there. Spotlight moments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Another 20K. It's 40K right there in two hours. Take you two hours to get 40K. Uh, we're going to skip these because they re re require gameplay. Collections. Easy 10K. That's 50K right there in two hours. Uh, Holiday and Friends Showdown. Another 20K. That's 70K. One try, two tries for the showdown. Easy peasy. Conquest, 30k. That's 100k XP for not a lot of time. This is an easy conquest. Doc Stethoscope Conquest, that's now 130k for an even easier conquest. You are basically a third of the way there, more than a third of the way there, in five to six hours, roughly. You guys can get this. Roy Halliday should already be owned. After that, make your way to 340. If you're going to grind, don't worry about grinding all the way to 500k. Fuck that. I personally, my end goal was shooting for was the Big Dog 3 because that's a free, potentially high diamond. I, of course, got hoed and got Francisco Alvarez. But go to 340k. Get your free Takashi because this Babe Ruth card is going to smack. And the sooner you get it, the more fun you can have using it in ranked Conquest mini seasons if you're an offline player, wherever you want to use it from. Next, we're going to go back to the calendar. Headliner set 18. I think they actually announced who that was. So forgive me, excuse me, while I look up on my phone. Uh, I believe they announced that earlier today. Excuse me, excuse me. Phone ain't working. There we go. Um, oh, they did. So, I am, forgive me ahead of time. Going to butcher his name. Headliner set 18 is 95 overall Future Star. Future Stars are coming, by the way. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Pittsburgh Pirates prospect... Leover Pig Piguero? Could be Yover Piguero. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to fuck it up on purpose. Uh, but highly touted prospect. Let's, uh, let's look at his profile a little bit, actually, right now as a team so we can know what we're expecting here. Leover... Piguero, uh, forgive me for not knowing anything about a Pirates prospect, but they're a dumpster fire, so I just, I don't really know. Um, Pirates top prospects. He's in double A, it looks like. Good for him. Uh, scouting grades. Hit tool, 55 out of 80. Powers of 50. Run is a 60, so it'll be pretty quick. Uh, he's an overall 55 prospect, so I don't know how we stretch to give him a 95 overall, but it's fine. Uh, okay, so he was he, he came back in the Starling Marte trade. He's a righty hitter, shows the ability to hit the ball with outstanding exit velo and premium bat speed, giving him the chance to eventually be a plus hitter. Continues to get stronger as he matures and could also have at least average power, especially if he can figure out who he is as a hitter. Uh, Over-aggressive, that doesn't matter. I think everybody who plays MLB The Show is over-aggressive. Plus runner who has shown he can steal a base. Covers plenty of ground at shortstop. Okay, cool. So he's a shortstop. That's fun to know. Um, my guess is this is going to be a decent headliner. I think we're going to see minimum 100 contact both sides. I'm not... It, it might not be that balanced. It might vary a little bit. But I'm going to say minimum 100 contact both sides. Based on what I just read, it sounds like he's going to have some, like a 70-ish power. On the 125 scale, I'm thinking like 80 speed, 83, 84, 85 fielding at shortstop. A passably good card. He's a headliner. I mean, he's not going to be the best card in the game. But listen, shortstop is kind of a weak position right now. Michael Young remains the top shortstop. And a lot, not even a lot of people, but some people don't have him. And those who do, like myself, don't even like him. So I'm running Cattell at short. But if you look at other shortstop options, it's Michael Young, Ernie Banks, Tatis, Corey Seager, uh, I don't think people use Story, I don't think people use Wander, and then you go to secondaries, Jose Ramirez, maybe, but he's expensive, uh, no one uses Santo, no one uses Suarez, no one uses that, that, maybe Machado, eh, 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 shortstop's a fucking dumpster fire of a position right now, absolute dumpster fire position, so they're adding a shortstop, super cool. Uh, June 2nd, Lou Gehrig Day. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Play a new program. Probably be like 50 program points like they have been. 
Maybe 100 if they want to get a little spicy, but I don't think so. With moments celebrating Lou Gehrig and two diamond player rewards. So, I <laughs> think we only have an 83 or 82 Lou Gehrig right now. I would imagine this is his 93 to 94 Lou Gehrig. Probably going to hit righties reasonably well. Not going to be great against lefties. Um, with so many first basemen in the game right now, I doubt he's going to be usable. I'm curious who the second diamond player reward could be. Maybe another Yankee. I don't... Just just a guess. I don't know if it's going to be Lou Gehrig Day. Uh, I'm interested to see how that program works. But that is on... Thursday. Thursday, Lou Gehrig Day. So that's cool that they're going to give us content on... Tuesday. I had to count days in my head. Sorry for the pause there. Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday this week. That's why I think this is such a big content week. Because it's not all dropping at once. They're giving you at least a little bit of time to take a, take, take a, a moment... To do the content in the order, like in a reasonable amount of time in the order is being released. You're not getting a new event, a new program, a Friday content drop with a big collection all in one day. That's so fucking overwhelming. That's the, you know, I say this making it, I know it seems like if you give a mouse a cookie, now he wants a glass of milk. I love how much content there is in this game. We can argue all we want about the order of which it's released. That's not what I mean. Volume of content, I enjoy. But I will admit that sometimes it is overwhelming with how much, quote-unquote, there is to do. I play every mode of Diamond Dynasty, with the exception of sometimes not many seasons. And to get all the cards I want to get, I have to play all the modes. So sometimes it does feel like a lot, especially when everything is on a timer. As in, you have three weeks, you have four weeks, you have... This program was two weeks. Um... The nice thing about player programs is they are endless. They live forever. Um, but it's nice that they're giving us time to complete each thing. I will hope to have uh, Lou Gehrig done the day he comes out because Lou Gehrig is super cool. Even if I don't want to use him, it's nice to get it done. You could probably, uh, you'll be able to lock that in. That's going to help you finish your Roy Halladay collection. You'll probably be able to lock Lou Gehrig in or whoever that end diamond is for another... 20k XP, 15k XP, something like that. And then Friday content. So Friday content is the big thing. Friday content. Big Legends and Flashbacks collection. Let's start with that. Because the, the new featured program is a lot to talk about. The Big Legends and Flashbacks collection. I told you last week to start preparing. You should have been preparing ahead of time. But I just want to pat myself on the back that I told you last week to prepare for it and they announced it last week. So shout out to me. Uh, but I have some thoughts. This is strictly a guess. I'm praying it's not another first baseman. Excuse me. That's how you are. Oh, oh fucking episode. Uh, it's, at some point, I will I will record these with like. Just shots. I'll just mainline caffeine into my body at this point. Um, it's not going to be a first baseman. Initially, I was thinking like, oh, Ryan Howard is the only one of the new legends or one of the only ones of new legends who has not gotten a new card upon uh, or, or after initial release. Him, Justin Moore, no. Kind of in that general, uh, that grouping there. Because Jared Weaver just got a new headliner. Uh, not a terrible card, by the way. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Uh, but I, I, too many first basemen, especially with the Lou Gehrig program the day before. I don't. Oh, I accidentally changed the screen. I don't think that's happening. What I think uh, is a decent possibility is actually Jimmy Rollins. They gave us like a ninety. It would probably be ninety nine. Ninety nine Jimmy Rollins. Uh, hopefully one that's not hoed like it was last year. Uh, they had mentioned during the content drop for the holiday program. That, like, kind of almost passively, without people paying attention, like, oh, there will be more Phillies cards coming. So, talking about how we don't have enough shortstops yet, um, I just, I, I, I have a feeling. I don't, uh, I don't know if Jimmy Rollins is the type of collection award to get people all sorts of jazzed up. Especially if it's as shitty of a card as it was last year. But Jimmy Rollins is another one of those guys, he's not a new legend, but he only has an 80 three overall right now now is a good time to drop to drop a good jimmy rollins card because by the time the better shortstops come out he will have had his time and he'll be phased out that's how we talk about like like content scaling there's uh, not all 99s are created equal we know this so early season 99s are different than late season 99s jimmy rollins is a good early season or early cycle 99 
Give me Jimmy Rollins now. We can fuck around with him a little bit for a month. Then we'll get all-star cards who will probably replace that, and so on and so on and so on. So that's my hope. Someone in that ilk. It doesn't have to be necessarily Jimmy Rollins exactly. It doesn't have to be a shortstop exactly. But it does have to be an early season 99 that is not a first baseman. Third baseman would be appreciated too. Third baseman would be super cool. Maybe now's a good time for an early season 99 George Brett. That'd be fucking dope. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. But nobody knows yet. The other thing to talk about Friday is the uh, new program is coming out. 30 players. Each team is going to get one future star that's already been announced, which is why the headliner future star just makes sense. So I'm going to go back here to the Twitter machine. My phone froze. To the, Only as of recording, only the AL East has been revealed. So we have... Please hold. I'm good at podcasting, and I come prepared. We, uh, LOL. We have... For the Orioles, Gunnar Henderson. Now, all these cards, it looks like, are going to be 95 overalls. If there are reliever cards, they might vary a little bit, but looks like 95 overalls. Gunnar Henderson, 95, shortstop for the Orioles. He's had good prospect cards or rookie cards or whatever the fuck they're called before. Uh, the gold version from last year. Future stars starting pitcher for the Red Sox, Brian Bello. Could be Bayo, so I apologize. B E L L O. Brian, B R Y A N. Cool way to spell it. Um, no, sorry, B R A Y A N. Cooler way to spell it. So, Brian Bello, uh, right handed pitcher. The Yankees are getting Oswald Peraza. I'm not super interested in that card. Uh, I don't think it's going to be good. Oswald Peraza has a bright future, but he's a light hitting shortstop. So, he's going to be a speedy contact slappy boy if they build him correctly. Uh, it's also weird that they've given Volpe a 90 overall, and now Peraza's getting a 95, which just means two Yankee shortstops will eventually have very good Future Stars cards, because I imagine Volpe will get one too. Um, they were supposed to be announcing the Blue Jays and the Rays as... W oh, Pacific Time. Okay, so as of recording, I don't fucking know who those cards are. 3 p.m. Pacific Time is when they're announcing the uh, Blue Jays and uh, the, the fucking the other team, the Rays. We'll see. Um, Blue Jays, it wouldn't be Gabriel Moreno. I don't know who's in the Blue Jays system. Let's look right now. Let's take guesses, and maybe I'll be right, maybe I'll be wrong. Blue Jays, top prospects. Look at us doing things live. It's funny, because by the time this comes out, it'll be old already. Uh, Gabriel Moreno has a prospect card, so I don't think it'll be him. Jordan Groshans had a card last year. Otto Lopez has a card this year. Orelvis Martinez is going to be the guy. That's my guess. Orelvis Martinez, he's a shortstop third baseman who's in double A. Um... He uh, is a power guy with a big arm. He is not great in the field. Well, he's a, he's a 45 out of 80 in the field. He'll be like a bronze to silver fielder. Um, that's my guess. And then Ray's top prospects. Ray's top prospects. Shane Boz or Baz is technically still a prospect. I don't think that's going to be it. Vidal Brujan is not going to be it. Xavier Edwards is not going to be it. Josh Lowe won't be it. Greg Jones is a shortstop. That's now a lot of shortstop. Taj Bradley's a pitcher. Uh, Brendan McKay has had cards before, and he's kind of flaming out. This is a tough one. This is a very tough one. Usually they don't dive too far down the prospect lists either. You know what, actually? Josh Lowe might be a good one. I'm going to go Josh Lowe. He's 24 years old, so he's creeping up on not prospect status. He was in the bigs a little bit this year. He's back in AAA now. Uh, but he's uh, good in the field, projects to have decent power, lefty bat, outfielder. And, yeah, fuck it. Uh, we'll, we'll say it's Josh Lowe. Uh, I'm not going to... The, the goal of this is not to go through every team and predict. It's not what we're doing here. We're just doing the AL East because that's what's been coming out today on Monday. But I'm excited. F Future Stars is a collection of cards that is often pretty controversial. Some people complain that their favorite team did not get the top prospect they thought. Uh, fuck you, that's not a good argument. Uh, the argument I will at least listen to is, like, how are we going to give Oswald uh, Cabrera, for example, or Peraza, sorry, Oswald Peraza, uh, a better card than, like, I don't know, pick a shortstop who... like They're going to give Peraza a 95 overall shortstop card two weeks after they drop a 93 Ernie Banks. 
oh, but Peraza's not better than anybody. I, I get it. I understand. The whole point of Future Stars is a projection. It's fun. It infuses youth into the game, new cards, uh, prospects for you to pay attention to. It teaches you about what's coming through the pike in MLB. I think it's super cool. I'm excited for it. Plus, it's 30 new cards. I might be wrong, but I don't think they announced any information as to, like, are we going to be able to get all 30? Is it going to be like the first program where you only get 12 and some of them are choice packs and some of them are not? Um, some of them might be no-sells. I hope they learned from all the feedback from that program and they don't make it that way. If I had to guess, you will not be able to get all 30 or pull all 30 out of the program. You will have to purchase some yourself. I don't know, though. So it's going to be interesting. I'm very interested to see attributes. I'm very interested to see positions. I'm hoping there are good starters. I'm hoping we get a reliever or two. It's probably unlikely to get a reliever or two, but like my starting pitching is fine. I have four super fractures. Thank you very much. But like Mike Messina, I love Mike Messina. He kind of gets hit a little bit on the higher difficulties. Shohei, I can't pitch with at all. It's just nice to have his extra bat in the lineup. He's hitting... 258, not great, but he's a pitcher and his PCI is really tiny. Uh, Keuchel is actually nasty, but I have a feeling people are going to start figuring him out pretty soon. So I'd love to get some new pitchers. I also don't know how good Roy Halladay is really online because I haven't actually used him in ranked yet. Uh, a lot of event, and he's 12-0 and 0 in events and things of that nature. Um, but you're not always playing good people in that. So I'd love to get some fresh stuff. Shortstop and third base are my key priorities here. Outfield help is on the horizon with Babe Ruth. Um, maybe some some guys who have some speed that I can take fucking Juan Pierre off my bench because he's otherwise useless other than his speed. Um, but yeah, guys, listen, this is a massive, massive, massive content week. All this to say, too, a new event on Wednesday. So, like, there's so much shit happening this week. Okay? So, I wish you all the best of luck in your collections. I hope you guys are prepared. We will talk, listen, next week's episode, basically we're just going to talk about all the shit, all the content, like uh, uh, as a look back. Like here's all the content that dropped. Here's what I think about it. We're going to talk about Babe Ruth. We're going to talk about whoever the big collection is. We're going to talk about the Lou Gehrig Day cards. We're going to talk about everything. All right? So like I said, best of luck. I hope you guys are prepared. I hope you guys have some spare stubs laying around. If you were smart and you did invest and you did collect, be ready to make a big profit Friday because if you have cards or extra cards that you're not locking in, even if you want them later, sell them Friday. Friday is your sell day because, God, prices are never going to be higher. Friday, Saturday, prices are going to be through the fucking roof. So take advantage of it. Be smart. Make good decisions. Do not impulsively buy things. If you're missing a card or two for your big collection, make a wise choice. Don't go poor trying to get a card day one. If you need to wait one more day for prices to come down to buy that last card, do that. Okay? End of the day, they're your stubs. I don't judge people. Do whatever you want with your stubs, but that is just my advice to you. So thank you guys for listening. Appreciate you. Best of luck. I hope everybody enjoys the new content. We'll talk about it next week.